If the dog gets wounded, it starts licking the wound right away. This helps because saliva contains lysozyme, an enzyme that cleaves bacteria. Mankind has learned to treat many diseases thanks to animals, but today we'll focus on this particular primate species, chimps. They're pretty smart. They create and use tools, are self-aware, work together, and learn by example and experience. But only recently has a group of researchers noticed that the chimps have medicine. Researchers first witnessed the unusual treatment process among chimpanzees in the Luongo National Park in Gabon. The aim of the research was to analyze the interaction between animals, their hunting strategies and tools. But no one suspected that chimps would use insects, and not as food. First, the scientists noticed a female chimp was applying something on her baby's injured paw, and that something had to be caught first. About a week later, they saw a similar case, but with another chimp. And then again, and again during the year. Chimps applied insects to their wounds. Sometimes they healed each other this way. And this is really a unique discovery. Because it's one thing to chew some leaves with medicinal properties, but taking care of another animal is quite a different matter. You sure these are the right bugs? E yes, right. Next. Although it actually sounds weird, see for yourself. Could a human even think of putting insects in an open wound? They're dirty. And what's the point of that anyway? Well, there seems to be more to it than you'd expect. All insects contain many microbes that constantly compete and fight each other. The toxic components that appear as a result not only help the insects survive, but also act as natural antibiotics. That is, chimps don't just shove things that accidentally fly past into open wounds. They know for sure that insects will prevent infection and help them recover. Chimps! Even humans are aiming to use insects as a source of new antibiotics, because the common ones gradually become ineffective. And indeed, this is not the only example of using insects in medicine. Mankind learned to use them a long time ago, and every insect is good enough. From ants and termites to grasshoppers, silkworms, and blowfly maggots. Even in ancient times, they were put in wounds to prevent or eliminate the infection, and then accelerate the healing. And yes, it looks just as disgusting as it sounds, but it really helps. Maggot therapy is still used in military medicine today, when people have access to all sorts of modern treatment. Still, the maggot therapy seems… scary to me? I get it, it works, and Steve simply had to mention it in the script, but I can't help myself. Even using bee venom doesn't look so disgusting, though we're talking about stings here. You may have heard that people deliberately allow bees to sting them. Of course, only for medical purposes and only in certain areas. One of the main components of bee venom, melodin, has an anti-inflammatory effect, reduces swelling and pain, for example in patients with arthritis. Tell me, could you agree to being stung by bees for the sake of staying healthy? Actually, people often use weird healing techniques that may do more harm than good. Let's get back to the animals. They have no internet, so no one will tell them about the presumed benefits of totally useless medicines. Every primate who's mastered medicine is almost a certified animal doctor who knows exactly what it's doing. For example, they know exactly where to get painkillers. Monkeys infected with the whipworm parasite eat twice as much tree bark as their healthy counterparts. But not only because the bark expels the parasite from the body, seven of the nine species of trees and shrubs preferred by sick monkeys have analgesic properties. Of course, this is not the same as just taking a pill, but in the wild, tree bark is considered affordable medicine. The red colobus monkeys keep up with their educated primate kin by feeding on charcoal. That's true only for the monkeys living in the gardens or near human dwellings. Charcoal is known to be very good for removing toxic compounds or anything that interferes with digestion from the body. But why are garden-dwelling red colobus monkeys paying so much attention to charcoal? Looks like there's a lot of Indian almond and mangoes growing there and charcoal helps better digest food like that. The population of these primates is higher in areas with Indian almond and mangoes, and charcoal too, of course. Maybe if all the primates joined forces, they'd start a pharmaceutical company. Tamarins like to eat fruits with large seeds protected by a sticky shell, and this, of course, is not merely a coincidence. Tamarins are small primates with a short digestive tract, so they simply wouldn't eat something cumbersome if it wasn't beneficial for them. Scientists speculate that the large number and size of undigested seeds constantly passing through the tamarind's gut mechanically dislodge intestinal parasites. It looks like they just can't stay inside. You know, the more I learn about monkey ways of healing, the more it seems to me they got damn proficient at medicine. Perhaps even better than humans in some ways.
discounting the level of intelligence, of course. Or maybe the whole point is that monkeys can handle diseases way easier. There is evidence, though not 100% confirmed, that primates do indeed recover faster than humans. For example, they say chimps heal overnight, both in captivity and in the wild, while humans, well, unless they have wolverine abilities, they can hardly boast such a speed of regeneration. The reasons for this difference are unclear. By the way, if you make changes in the genes of mice and introduce a human defect to them, the wounds will heal more slowly. I'm starting to think humans are losers on this issue. But at least we invented disease prevention. What other animal will think so far ahead to prevent different unpleasant situations in the future? What do you mean monkeys floss their teeth? Steve, what is this? Hey! After eating, adults and young macaques floss their teeth. Researchers have seen many times how they held a thin fiber between their teeth and pulled at it. Macaques use several materials as dental floss, bird feathers, grass, coconut fiber, nylon threads, and even metal wire. I also mentioned hair in one of my previous videos. Don't forget many items on the monkey menu are, shall we say, not very clean? Dirt, slime, fur, thorns? Hmm. To get rid of this inedible stuff, macaques either wash food in puddles or wrap it in leaves and rub it clean. What other animal would bother doing that? Moreover, such habits often appear spontaneously and spread very quickly. Japanese macaques wash sweet potatoes before eating, but they only started doing this in 1953 when a female macaque, Emo, discovered that potatoes, without sand and grit, tasted much better. Nothing crunches on the teeth and not as many digestion issues. And the capuchin monkeys went one step further. Regardless of where they live, they anoint themselves with a range of strong-smelling substances, including millipedes, ants, limes, and onions. Can you imagine what it smells like? Maybe it has something to do with social interaction? Well, you know, you smell like onions, I smell like onions. Bro! But there is another theory. Anointing various pungent substances serves to repel parasites. Yes, little capuchin monkeys have thought of this. They anoint all areas they can reach. And where not, they ask friends. I wonder if this could be considered a relaxing aroma oil massage. And by the way, since we're talking about relaxation, <sighs> the Japanese macaques who've learned to wash potatoes also know a thing or two about relaxing. To relieve stress, they, like many people, use a warm bath. However, you won't find a jacuzzi in the wild, so macaques chill in the hot springs. People used to believe they only choose these pools to keep warm in the winter. But scientists discovered hot springs reduce stress hormone levels in primates. That is, macaques are just having a good time. The only thing missing to make it perfect is drinks. Although, no actually, there's nothing good about that. Monkeys can indeed consume alcohol and, like humans, get hooked especially when it starts at a young age or is due to heredity. And monkeys, like humans, drink a lot in stressful situations to cope with them. Have you ever seen a drunk monkey? Well, it looks a little shaky. Okay, it just fell. Oh, no, it didn't. Ah, uh, no, it did fall after all. Let's give the poor fella credit. He really tried his best. Hey, why are you climbing this branch? It's lying on the ground. You won't... Okay, moving on. Seems like humans taught monkeys that. And I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out to be the case. Couldn't they teach them something useful, like they teach us? For many years now, scientists have been researching methods of primate self-medication in order to use the given knowledge for the benefit of humans. For example, Professor Eloy Rodriguez argues that certain compounds that animals use to kill parasitic worms may be useful against tumors, not to mention plants with antimicrobial properties. To date, less than 5% of tropical forest plants have been screened for medicinal properties. Can you imagine what medicines could hide in the forests? And humanity can't find them. We just need to observe monkeys more closely. And do research, of course. However, even without lab experiments, some people use the knowledge of animals to fight diseases. In Indonesia, orangutans rub a foamy mixture of saliva and Dracaena cantleyi leaves on their body. Local indigenous people use this plant in a similar way to relieve joint and muscle pain. Scientific analysis has shown Dracaena cantelli does indeed have anti-inflammatory properties. Orangutans know their stuff. And what should people do if monkeys don't live next to them? Watch the bears. I'm serious. The American black bears know all about the healing properties of the root of a plant called osha. It looks like something between parsley and dill that grew somewhere in the mountains, and osha roots can cause blisters on the mucous membranes if you try to eat even one of them. But the American black bear uses osha roots to treat arthritis pain. 
Biologist Sean Sixted claims that locals are also aware of the healing powers of this plant, all because they watched the bears. I don't know exactly how people use the roots. I hope they don't eat them after all. See you later.